Hello everyone, this is Mumbo and welcome back to another episode on the Hermit's Craft server. It's episode 78 and today I have got some wonderful news because we're going to be starting work on a new relatively massive project. I mean this is going to be a big big project, something that I'm going to be working on over the next couple of episodes and it's something that I am super excited for but also tiny bit nervous for. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really quite nervous for this one because this is something that I've always wanted to do but never really decided to do in survival mode. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be creating the Mumbo AI. That's going to be the name of this chap. I'm sure you can think of better names. In fact, let me know down in the comment section because some of them could be absolutely hilarious. But for now, it is going to be called the Mumbo AI and we are basically going to be building a little thing in the industrial district area that we're going to have to maintain. Now, this is not like any other digital pets that I've built before. Obviously, I've done a redstone tutorial on one and of course, there have been plenty of other digital pets in the past. This one is going to be slightly different. It's almost going to be like a quest bot where it requests certain items and then we have to go out and get them. I think it's going to be amazing and we're going to be building it in this sort of area right here. As I say though, just a tiny bit nervous of this project because, well, it's going to be huge. So here is the checklist of things that this build is going to involve. So the first thing it's going to have is it's going to have a big piston tape face. This is not going to be a digital face. We're going to use piston feed tapes, which I know I've been doing quite a bit recently. I, I don't know what's come over for me, but we're going to be using a piston tape face because I think that'll look pretty cool. And it's going to have a timeline at the bottom, so the length of time before it runs out and dies. It's going to request random items when the new item is put in. So when we place in the item that it requested previously, it will then come up with a random item that we need to get to put into the system to keep it happy. That's basically the idea behind that one. And I want to have access points in pretty much all of the areas of my base. Now what I mean by that is I want places to place the items and I also want warning lights all over my base so I know when this thing is about to die. That's the simple idea behind that one. So that is the project, that's what we're going to be working on and the first thing that I've got to do is I've actually got to design this thing which means that this Hermitcraft episode is going to be a tiny bit different because for at least the first half of it I'm actually going to be playing in creative mode in a testing world doing redstone designing. I, I thought I would bring you along with me because I thought some of you might find it interesting. So let's crack on with that one. So the first thing I've had to do is I've had to design the piston feed tape and that should be all of the redstone in place. And as you guys know, I'm a bit of a professional at these things these days. And it looks like this one is working like a charm as per usual. So this one is functional. This is going to be what is controlling the face of this thing. And the important thing about this piston feed tape is that it's actually going to be controlled. We're going to be able to decide what face is on the screen at any given time, which is actually a little bit complicated. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to use cauldrons with various different fill levels. And then we're also going to be powering a block inside this feed right here. So this isn't actually going to be on display. This is going to be underneath the display and it's going to be what's controlling what is on the screen. Yeah, it's a little bit confusing. Okay guys, a little bit more progress has now been made and in theory, this should now be like a smart piston feed tape. That's basically my idea behind this thing. So let's grab ourselves a wooden button and it should know what face is showing on the display. So this right here is the front and at the back here we've got the decoder for our display and right now the third torch is lit up. When we hit this button, in theory, and I'm going to say that in theory, this should actually work. And one thing that I will say is I think that redstone torch should be there. However, I'm not 100% certain. So let's just give it a go. We hit the button and we should get eight ticks through the system, which seems to be working fine. That block should stop in front of the repeater, which it has. And now the fourth torch is lit up. That's good. Okay, this is good. These are all good signs. All right, let's just flip it around again. And in theory, the first torch should come on. Yes. Oh, this is good. Right, we hit the button again and the second torch should come on and if that happens then that means that this system is actually working and we have created a smart piston feed tape system so now the redstone circuit knows what it's displaying on the front of the screen which means we can choose what it displays on the front of the screen using the piston feed tape so if we say hey we want a frowny face it will know when to stop and we can say hey we want a smiley face it will also know when to stop that's good that is very very good that's extremely important for this system and I wasn't 100% certain if it was going to work or not. Oh, I've got myself confused. I am so confused right now. <laughs> wow, I'm, I'm really, really lost here. So I have fixed my confusion. I have slowed down this entire system. So now when this cauldron reaches this comparator, it should stop. Are you ready? 
It did! It actually works! So we can now choose when we want this thing to stop. So let's just say we want it to cycle round one more time. Then we would hit this button right here. We would select that phase. That is, kick this thing into action. It's a little bit slow paced because, of course, you know, this system does take some time to recognize what goes where. But then when this cauldron reaches that comparator, it should stop there. That's perfect. That's like maybe 50%, probably about 30% of the redstone circuitry worked out. That was the one part that I was a little bit worried about because having four different options is actually a tiny bit complicated. So here we have our button selector panel. This is like an RS null latch array. That runs into our red coder, which then goes into some AND gates, which takes the output out into the redstone clock, which runs it into the piston feed tape. So if you want to know how it works, that's how it works. Some decoration has been done to the design. So this is our guy. Currently, he is dead. That is the dead look. Honestly, I, I can't get any better than that. He has such youthful, awake eyes. So maybe in the future, we might have to add in a piston tape for the eyes as well. But for now, we're just going to be doing the mouth. And yeah, his tongue's out. He's looking a little bit worse for wear. So let's just switch him over to happy so that we can see what he looks like then. It's a very generic smiley face. We just hit the button. And then, of course, the happy face that makes its way around. And hopefully, this is the face that we're going to be seeing most often. So now all I have to do is I have to do the timing circuits, I have to do the timeline that goes across the bottom as well, and that's going to have a red coder which is going to run into this button selector panel because we're not going to be using buttons for this, we're not going to be able to select what face is on, that is going to be chosen automatically by the system. Oh my word, this is causing me a serious brain ache. Oh, I'm so glad I did this in creative mode beforehand. And once again guys, I'm really confused again. I am... I'm totally lost on this one. Yeah, I, I don't really know how I'm going to do the selector circuits, which are going to decide where the face is, depending on how many items are in this dropper, depending on how many redstone lamps are turned on. It's... this is a lot more difficult than I was expecting, to be honest with you. I thought this was going to be like a one or two hour thing and then it would all be done. We're currently two hours into the project <laughs> and we're not even halfway done. We still have to do all the randomizers for the random item selection. Oh, oh, this is going to be a strange Hermitcraft episode. I do apologize for those of you who wanted survival action. This is just taking a lot longer than I expected. And I do believe I've just worked it out. That is basically the moral of the story when it comes to redstone contraptions, is if you feel like you don't know what's going on, then just take a step back, look at it for a while, perhaps have some lunch, and then pop back to it, and hopefully you've found a solution. So, by the look of things, all of the redstone lines are hooked up, now I just have to do all of the redstone bits. I'm just performing the first test of our reset system, and currently it's looking pretty good. So, what's happening right now is I have triggered this bottom circuit right here. So this is as if we have thrown the correct item through the system, it then goes up through like this, it's triggered our snore latch, our redstone clock is currently working, and it is sending items from our bottom dropper down here, which is like the heart of the system, up into the top dropper. Now obviously this takes a very long time, but when this redstone line reaches the end, in theory, this RS snore latch should then be turned off, the redstone clock will turn off, and these pistons will then retract, causing a redstone output to be sent through this circuit, which will then tell the system to put on a happy face. That's it. That's how it's meant to work. And now I'm just going to have to wait and see if it's actually going to function as planned. So we've got two redstone lamps left to go. I've waffled on long enough for you to see this. Right, we've got one left to go. Here it goes. I have just remembered that I haven't actually hooked up the piston feed tapes. We'll be able to tell if it would have worked. Right, there it is. Clock has turned off. Pistons have retracted. An output has been sent through the system and it looks to be the correct output, and that would have triggered our AND gate. Oh my word, it would have worked. It would have actually worked. I can't believe this big noodly mess of redstone is actually functional at this point in time, because it is about 42 degrees in my office, and I'm amazed my brain is still functional. All right, I'm doing the first test of the face detection and it's functional, and it's actually functional. Now I do apologize because you're going to hear my mouse clicking quite a bit here. But what I'm doing is I'm artificially lowering the happiness level. So I'm currently flicking the lever, which runs into the input to the top dropper, which is sending items from the top dropper down into the bottom dropper, which means that our happiness levels are gradually on the way down 
if you watch our redstone lamps. Eventually, they'll make their way down, and then when that piston retracts, the system should detect that and put an unhappy face on the display. So here goes. We're about to find out if it's working. It is going to take quite a few more lever flicks. And once again, I'm so sorry for my really loud mouse at this point in time. I know it's being incredibly noisy, but I just really want to see if this is working. It worked the first time, but I want to make sure that all of the faces are properly aligned and they're properly functional because this is like a hugely important part of the system. If this doesn't work, of course, the whole thing doesn't work and that's just completely useless. So here it goes. We're on to our final redstone level here. It's taking a little while longer than I was expecting, I have to say. But eventually, the redstone level should drop down and the piston should retract and everything should fire into action. Good, okay. And the system has detected it. This is good, this is good. Now, does it stop on the unhappy face? That, that's what we need to happen. I'm so scared. No! <laughs> After all that, it doesn't! After all that, it doesn't. Where's it gonna end? What's happened to it? What's it triggered? Oh, we could have broken something here. It's it stopped on the dead one. The system thinks our guy is dead. <laughs> the system thinks our guy is dead. I'm assuming this is just a cauldron issue and not necessarily a redstone issue. That's what I'm gonna say. Good news, everyone. Everything is now functional, believe it or not. Amazing enough, everything is now functional. When this guy is fully happy, he shows a happy face, and then gradually, as he makes his way down, he shows a straight face, then the unhappy face, then he dies, and if we place the correct item into the system at any point during that cycle, then all of these redstone lamps fill back up, and he goes back to being happy again. That works, amazingly enough. It's taken me many, many hours to get to this point in time, and it's given me a lot of brain aches, but it is now functional. Now we have to just do the quest request system, which should in theory be the simplest part of this because it just involves a randomizer and then the locking of one or two hoppers. Should be easy peasy compared to this anyway. I say that, but if I were to do the randomizer using redstone as in use the dropper and the hopper system, it would end up looking something a little bit like this. And that only has four possible outcomes and we want eight, which would be big. I mean, yeah, it goes without saying that, that would be a relatively large redstone circuit. So what we're going to do instead is we're going to build a good old fashioned chicken randomizer in the back of this guy's head right here. So we've got a bunch of pressure plates and we're going to chuck a chicken on the inside of this thing. And that should allow us to get a relatively random output from the system whenever we want to. So when we chuck an item inside the system, we will then take an output from this and it should in theory be different every time. Occasionally maybe two will be triggered, which is absolutely a-okay by me because then we've got two possible items that we can use to keep this guy happy. So I've come up with a slightly better idea which involves throwing an item into the hoppers and then it gradually gets sorted out by all of these. And it seems to be functional, but it's just a difficult job hooking up the outputs of this into the redstone lamps and also the outputs from this into all of the hoppers as well because of course we need to lock certain hoppers to make sure that the correct item goes through into the system. And then also we need to do the RS null latch reset line which is triggered by all of this. But trust me, we're on the home straight now. It may not feel like it, but we are. Final piece of redstone circuitry now, and we should all be done. So we need to run a repeater out from this line right here, and that is going to run across, all the way across here, and up into this circuit. So that's it. That should be everything all done and dusted. Now we probably are going to need a repeater or two inside this system right here. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. But then we have no repeaters over there. So perhaps we should place in a few blocks like this and then maybe run the repeater straight direct into that block. And that should be everything completed. So this is it. This is the redstone circuit that we have right here. Now I'm going to have to do a bunch of testing of this thing just to make sure that all of the randomizers work and the entire system functions as a whole. But for the most part, it seems to be functional. As you can see, we have actually dropped two redstone lamps in the process of building this thing, which means that he's actually going to be changing expression very, very shortly. When this redstone lamp turns off, he's going to be straight faced. So that's something to watch out for. But I am so chuffed that we've managed to get this done, even if it has taken me 
a very long time indeed. This is pretty much my entire recording time gone, but I'm going to extend my recording time for today's episode because I would feel bad if I'd done the entire thing in creative mode. So this is the final official test. This is the test if it is complete. The item was displayed on the board. I then chucked that specific item into the system after trying other items. It was the only one that dropped through. And when it went through, the faces started to change and... It's displaying a happy face. All of the redstone lamps are on. A new item has been displayed on the board. That happened right at the very beginning. And a new item is locked out. So let's see what sort of item we would have needed. We would have needed quartz blocks once this guy runs out of happiness once again. It works! It actually works! I cannot contain my excitement right here. Oh, I seriously can't. Right, let's pop back onto the Hermitcraft server and we'll start working out how on earth we're going to build this gargantuan massive project. I mean, look at that down there. Oh, it's just gonna be horrendous, isn't it? So, my plan for the end of today's Hermitcraft episode is to go on a mass resource gathering mission. Because, as you saw from that build, it's going to involve so many resources. I mean, we're going to need tons and tons of repeaters, tons and tons of comparators, and just tons of pretty much everything. Redstone torches are going to be a must. We're going to need cauldrons, hoppers, just the whole caboodle. Okay, we're going to need the whole caboodle right here. So first up, I'm looking through my chest to see if we have got ridiculous quantities of items. And by the look of things, the answer is no. So yeah, definitely a massive item gathering mission is required because otherwise we are never ever going to be able to construct this thing guys i'm a little bit worried um i can't find any redstone anywhere just none there's there's none in the drone there's none in the rv because of course i cleared out all of those items i've just looked through all those chests still none in there uh this could actually be really bad. I mean, what do we do if I run out of redstone? Maybe I could AFK over up at the top of the witch farm? That could be a thing that we do. Maybe I should look for redstone ore in, in my chest down at the bottom. But honestly, I, that's something that I hadn't thought of. I've always assumed that I've just got huge quantities of redstone lying around. But that might not be the case. Yeah, it's not looking good. Okay, we've got coal ore. We have 28 redstone ore right there. That is it, though. <laughs> That's it. That is all of the redstone ore that we have. Oh, dear. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Come on. No. Yes, that is what I want to see. That is brilliant, 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 brilliant. Right, I'll chuck in all of this redstone right here. I'm not going to steal all of it because that would be bad. I'm going to craft up a bunch of redstone supplies then tonight. We're going to go AFK up here if the witch farm is actually functional. Uh, Exuma Void will not tell me at this point in time. He seems to be AFK. And now to top it all off, we have just run out of stone, which is something that I thought would never happen. But I seem to remember that I have got massive stone supplies somewhere down underneath the ground inside all of the chests where I did my super mining projects. Now, I think we should be able to locate these areas. That was amazing. I think we should be able to locate these areas relatively easily and pick up a bunch of resources. I just can't believe how fast we're flying through my supplies on Hermitcraft right now. Clearly we're putting a lot of effort into the projects we're doing and basically using them all up. And also guys, I found my helmet! No wonder I couldn't find it. This guy right here has chored it. He actually chored my helmet. Fantastic. We've got this thing and now we can break our way out of the power beam and just leave the area because by the look of things there's actually quite a few zombies down there. So I've managed to muster up a handful of different redstone components. We have got a bunch of redstone torches, we've got a bunch of repeaters, we've got three stacks of repeaters, we've got a stack and a bit of comparators which I'm not 100% certain is going to be enough but for now that's good enough for me. We've got 64 and 15 hoppers and I'm just in the process of crafting up the final ones and we actually need a tiny bit more inventory space right here and a tiny bit more iron so let's just look through the system I think I've got some more iron over here and that should do us so that should give us two full stacks of hoppers which once again I don't really know if that's quite going to be enough but I think for the time being 
it will be good enough. We're not going to be building this entire thing in one episode, so I guess we can do some resource gathering, and then we can build some of it, and then do some more resource gathering, and basically do it a tiny bit like that. But I believe at the start of the next episode of Hermitcraft, we are definitely going to have to do one mega mining session, because otherwise, I'm just, I'm not gonna have enough resources. This is all my redstone. I don't have a single bit of redstone left. I've got 64 redstone ore, which means we've got about seven stacks. But other than that, it's all gone. All completely gone. So if you need any redstone blocks for this build, which we definitely do, then we're not going to be able to do it. Now that's not good. I don't like being in that situation right there. But these are all the resources that we have for the build so far. And I think that's just about good enough for me. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop over to the witch farm. And I'm actually going to take a look at it on the floor. Just to see if it's running. Just to take a look and see if this thing is actually up and running because I know Exuma Void has been having a few issues with the design and by the look of things we have we have something no it's not looking I personally don't think that's up and running these guys down at the bottom here are meant to be shooting and they're not now I would love to try and fix this using these iron golems right here but oh oh no we, we did get some witches being fired off but no I, I don't think it's actually working because there's no iron golems on the bottom layer I'm gonna speak to Exuma Void and I'll see if I can try and get it up and running but by the look of things this thing isn't functional so I must admit this may be the only Hermitcraft episode I have done in this entire series where I have not placed a single block on the server. Not a single block has been placed on the server. All of it has been done in creative mode. Then of course we did all of the crafting. So today's progress is this. That is it. That is everything that we have done in today's episode. Look at it, it's beautiful. It really is a thing of beauty. Absolutely stunning. Definitely one of my best Hermitcraft episodes. Obviously, I'm, I'm very chuffed that we managed to build that thing in Redstone Testing World. It's not been completely wasted, but this episode has definitely been a slightly stranger one. However, I am very, very, very excited to start work on that project on the Hermitcraft server, and I hope you guys are too. But unfortunately, ladies and gents, that is all I've got time for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to hit that like button, and if you really loved it, then make sure to subscribe. But thanks for watching, guys. This has been Mumbo, and I'm out. I'll see you later.